Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to replace a GFCI. So, GFCI outlets do wear out over time. There's an electromechanical switch in here, and they can go bad, or if they're exposed to the weather, you might need to replace one of these when that electromechanical switch goes bad. So, first thing you need to do is make sure you turn off the power at the circuit breaker. So, we've gone ahead and done that. And uh, you can always check it with a non-contact voltage meter like so. Make sure that the power is off. Uh, we'll put a link to one of those below. But once you've got that done, you can now safely remove the cover plate. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now that we've got the cover plate removed, uh, it is always a good idea to just take your non-contact voltage meter, test again to make sure that there's nothing in there, or you could plug something in that you know that works and just make sure that the power is off. You just wanna be safe when you're working with electrical. So we do know the power is off. Now we're gonna take these two screws out that hold in the GFCI to the electrical junction box. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that. Now that we have these two screws loosened up, we can just pull the electrical outlet, the GFCI forward, and that's gonna expose the wiring and allow us better access. So you can see back in there, we've got two wires connected here, and this has electrical tape on the outside of the GFCI outlet. So we're just gonna remove that electrical tape, look for the edge on it, and we can just peel it up. Uh, not all of you will have electrical tape on there, but some of you might, so just go ahead and you're gonna just peel that electrical tape off. You can use a knife if uh, it's not working for you. Now that we've got the electrical tape off, we can go ahead and loosen up the two screws. We've got one here and we've got one over on this side. Now, if you live in a state with plastic junction boxes, you're also going to have a ground wire, which would typically attach to that green screw. Since we live in an area that uses metal junction boxes, the ground wire or the grounding of the system is through the junction box and conduit. So we do not have a ground wire on the top of this terminal, but if you live in an area that does, you're just gonna go ahead and remove that as well. So let's just go ahead, take a screwdriver and loosen up the terminals on the side of the GFCI. Now that we have the old GFCI removed, we can go ahead and uh, we might wanna just re-bend these hooks on these wires a little bit, just so that they fit better in there. This one was a little tight, so we're just gonna open that loop up a little bit like so. Now we can go back in with the replacement GFCI that we've got here. So on the back of this, uh, you're gonna be able to see where it says load and line. The line is the colored wire or the hot wire. So in this case, we know the red wire is the hot wire. The white wire is the neutral wire. So we're gonna go ahead and put our hot wire, the red wire on this terminal here where it says hot on the back of the switch. And we're gonna put our white wire, the neutral wire on this terminal right here. Now, why does it have them down here as well? Well, that's if you had another outlet that you wanted to protect with this GFCI, you would connect it to these and extend the circuit over to that other outlet. So a GFCI can protect more than one outlet. It can protect the other outlets downstream of it as well on the same circuit. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and wire up the red wire, the hot wire on this side, and the white wire on this side. And if you had a ground wire, you'd then wire that into that green terminal. So let's make sure these are loose and uh, wire them up. Now that we've got the wires connected, I'd like to go back with electrical tape and cover up the terminals just to protect them from making contact with anything inside the junction box. Or if you had to do some troubleshooting on this while the power is live, it does provide a little extra layer of protection. Now we can fold the wires back into the junction box and re-secure the outlet, the GFCI, into the junction box with the two screws.
Now that we have the GFCI installed in the junction box, we can go ahead and resecure our cover plate. With the cover plate installed, we can now go turn the power back on and test this GFCI outlet to make sure that it is working. We have the power restored to the GFCI outlet and you can see the indicators that are on showing that the power is on. Now we want to test and make sure this works. So all we're going to do is press the reset button. Now we've got the GFCI reset and it should be working. It's a good idea to test it with one of these. This is just a GFCI outlet tester that will indicate that this is correctly working and it is correctly wired. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install it here and see what happens. All right, I have two orange lights or two yellow lights. And if we look on our GFCI outlet, tester. it will show us that that means it is correctly wired and it is correctly operating. Now we're going to go ahead and test it. And all we do to test it is go ahead and press this button, which will trip the GFCI. We see that the GFCI tripped, which means that it is correctly working and we can test it again like so. Now you don't have to have one of these to test your GFCI. You can also test your GFCI just by pressing the reset button. And when it is powered up, you go ahead and press the test and the reset should pop out and it will cut off power to anything that is installed. Now, a nice feature of this GFCI outlet is that it does have those plastic plugs that cover up the holes that just make it a little bit safer for children that have a tendency to stick things in there. It's a little bit more forced to plug a plug in, but it keeps kids from plugging things in there that they shouldn't plug in. So go ahead and reset and you can see that the GFCI is correctly working and we have no issues. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like this video, and give us a thumbs up. If you wanna support us, click on any of the links below, or if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Thank you.